you know, I'm sure you've been asked this, but regarding your collaboration with Tom, what did you see in him? What did he see in you as far as, I mean, you know, co-writing as well as co-producing and embarking on this venture, you need to have someone who's going to really be right by your side. How did both of you complement each other? Well, we were introduced actually by a, a film producer from Los Angeles and with the intention of Tom playing uh, the lead of Sergei. And when we met, it was very clear that he has this amazing quality of being able to convey emotions really without words, I think, in his very nuanced and subtle performance. Um, and then we shot two scenes to prove to the financiers foremost that I can actually direct the film. And, and then Tom started to make some uh, suggestions on how to improve the script. And, and that really led to us uh, working and writing together for more than two years before the script was really uh, ready for shooting. This is a very ambitious production with all these visual setups. Can you just talk, talk about what is the key in, in Lehman's perspective? And actually, you have a certain budget, but you make it you make it seem a lot more expensive with so many different scenes. What was the challenge and what's the key to doing that? Well, the challenge was definitely making a period film set in a Soviet Air Force uh, with an independent film budget. Uh, but I think the key was just a very smart and experienced team around us. Um, our DOP, who actually studied in Moscow in the 80s under Tarkovsky's DOP, use of uh, our costume designer and uh, production designers who just knew the era and I think could find very practical, cheap solutions and a lot of planning. We visited most sets at least three times with our team and, and really fought it through, like, okay, we can shoot here, you know, from this... Uh, degree to here we have a like 160 degree set uh, because everywhere else there would be modern buildings which we couldn't really hide so it was it was a lot of planning and i think smart approach to uh, yeah to making it i think many times under what the hollywood film would have uh, cost i guess this is kind of answering your second question but i'm just so curious tom was mentioning that you you and he had an ethos of just never compromise it's great to say it, but how hard? How hard is it to actually just live by that by that mission? Because there's so many steps along the way where compromise could be maybe your best friend or maybe the devil, right? So it's interesting. My uh, directing professor, really amazing lady Judith Weston uh, here in Los Angeles, she always said that never compromise as a director. That always make a choice and find a solution. And I think. It's not easy, and I uh, just recently I got pretty strong criticism from one of my uh, team members saying, well, you know, nothing is good enough for you. <laughs> but honestly, I don't believe in good enough. I believe in everyone doing their best. And <clears throat> if I, I think the worst thing for me is to, to give my promise to a person, in this case, real Sergei, to tell his story and then be like, well, well, you know, this is good enough, like this will do. No, I, I feel to really create a film that touches people, you have to pay attention to every detail and, and really do your best. And then people will also feel and see it. You know, that that said, Peter, you could have this narrative could have gone become very saccharine, or very manipulate the emotions. But I loved how your story is taken out of real life. So the emotions that are generated feel very organic. Can you just talk about that balance and not pandering to the audience with you, with your narrative? I think it's it's about really trusting in the intelligence of the viewer of the audience and not, you know, making everything black and white and like okay, look, this is how it is and this is how you must feel. Um, that's what I love about our team and especially our actors that uh, the performances are truthful and that often means that uh, there is not just one single way to interpret the moment or a situation and everyone can really really i think read out what their life experience what their perspective on the story uh, informs them um, that's that's always been i think our goal as filmmakers and i'm really glad if it comes across from the film that uh, our goal was just to tell this simple love story between three people. Yeah, just growing up, was cinema always a big motivation for you or did it 
initially come from story because you're also a world traveler as well. So there, you have so many different interests. Did you start off as a, a bookish child uh, reading film books and watching movies or was it more about going out into the world as well? I think going out to the world, actually. I have to say that I'm not one of those directors who sat like all of their childhood in a movie cinema. I loved films. I really do. And and in hindsight, I remember now like mixing VHS tapes while in high school and making my own little videos, but I didn't really think much of it back then. It was just like a hobby. Um, but I think for me, what always fascinates is the human condition and kind of the meaning of what are we doing here and what's what's this experience all about. So film is an amazing way to share this experience and to, I think, let people experience somebody else's life or somebody else's perspective um, and while doing it create a bit more understanding of others who might be different than us wondering how you've matured as a filmmaker since firebird pretty much came on on your doorstep because it's not something that that took two years and then the film comes out this is over over several years <laughs> and and maturation so maybe actually, I'm sure it enhanced the project. But how have you how have you grown as a filmmaker over the years, just with this with this journey? Well, basically, they say that our bodies change all cells in seven years. So I guess I'm a totally new person. <laughs> um, but I think for me, psychologically, it was a big challenge of believing in myself and also of really trusting my feeling in every situation. What this film has has really taught that every time that I've made a decision according to what somebody else says of how it should be, life has corrected that decision and I've had to, let's say, go back to the original vision and the original feeling of the story and um, really learning to trust your own feelings. And if something feels right, even without a rational explanation, then to go that pathway and if not, then keep searching until it feels right. Peter, my final question to you is, uh, as far as searching goes, and I'm so excited after watching Firebird to watch more of your stuff down the road, but I, I also wanna see where you're going to be down the road and what do you have a passion project right now that you're embarking on or and what is what is the road like right now for you? Well, the passion project is really Firebird of distributing it and getting it in front of uh, people across the world. Uh, we just had our UK premiere last week and now obviously coming to a lot of cinemas across the US this week. So this has basically taken 24 seven all of the time since uh, end of last year. And, and you know, we end our kind of active distribution with Pride Month in June and then take a little summer vacation and, and see which story really resonates next. Peter, thank you so much for your time. I really enjoyed your film. Thank you.